My name is Whitney Goulston, and I have epilepsy. I grew up in Unionville. My mom and dad are both actors, and my dad ran a summer theater in Muskoka. It was a wonderful environment to grow up in. We all were encouraged to, if we had views, to show them, and we can make a difference. And we all tried to find our own causes. One person, one voice can make a difference. My dream when I grew up was to be a writer. At 19, all of that changed. I had my first tonic-clonic seizure, or what some might call grand mal seizure. I don't think it changed my life very much at all for a number of years. I just, you know, I would take my medication, I would have a seizure every once in a while, but life went on as usual. It wasn't until 2006 where my simple partial seizures started to change and started to become more frequent. In 2007 in August, I gave birth to my son Andrew. We weren't really prepared though for what it's like to be so sleep deprived, um, which was one of my triggers for my seizures. And my seizures started to get a little bad. And when Andrew was five weeks old, I dropped him um, during a seizure. We had a fracture of the skull, got a hairline fracture. He was just a baby, so it did heal. It was absolutely terrifying. I felt like the worst mother in the world. That was certainly a, a wake-up call. I had to make adjustments for being a mother with epilepsy. I was no longer allowed to carry him. My husband worked from home, thankfully. I do the cooking and the, and the, the housework and still trying to work for most of that year. 2009, I was pregnant again, and that was a little more difficult. I started to have drop seizures where you just drop without any notice. Whitney would just, just hit the ground um, several times a day. I fell down the foot of stairs when I was five months pregnant. At that point, I was terrified that, that something had happened to the, to the baby. I was on bed rest for the final month. Lillian was born June 1st, 2009. I wasn't able to pick up my children, bathe them, feed them. I wasn't able to cook. I couldn't go to the bathroom by myself. It was just knuckling down and finding a way to make it work, really. And uh, it was pretty hard, and that was the point when I realized I had to give up work as well. I finally gave in and agreed to wear a helmet. When I was in the house alone, I had to be in a wheelchair or in bed. My son would come into bed with me and watch movies and hold my hand when I'd have a seizure, and he would say, you know, it's okay, mommy, don't worry. When I looked in the mirror, I saw a failure, really. At that point, it was clear that the medication enough was not helping her anymore. I wanted something to change. I couldn't live the way I was living anymore. So I said, it might be time for you to have a workup to see if you are a candidate for some type of surgical treatment. And we went into the EMU. We implanted a number of electrodes, put a grid of electrodes, plus many other electrodes to cover many different areas. It was to actually figure out all her brain function, because the only way we could tell the relationship of her seizures to where her function of the brain is, to actually map out her brain. Dad, I, I can't help, I can't help. Hello. Whitney? Mm-hmm. Hi. Whitney? So at that point, we could define with 
a lot of detail where her seizures were really coming from. The primary source had been coming from this lesion that was about the size of a small tangerine. The main problem with discussing the risk of this surgery was the location of where this was. This area that looked abnormal was kind of pinned between two very important parts of her brain. In the front of this area was the area that controls her leg, and behind uh, was the area that uh, gives her vision. While you might lose your peripheral vision, you might become paralyzed on your left side. It's kind of being between a rock and a hard place. I mean, the rock is her motor strip, and the hard place is her vision behind. And that's a little scary, a little daunting. So we're looking at about a 30% chance of being seizure-free after all this. And then you add that to the risk of the surgery. Yeah, well, <laughs> Whitney went for it anyway. <laughs> I said, I want to do it. I've come this far. I want to give it a chance. Hey! Mommy! Hi, Charlotte! Did you have a good day? I got my life back. Hi, sweetheart. Hi. How are you? I get to be your mom again. Nelly, your turn. Here's your card. It's a uh, yellow. You won. Yes. Good job, dude. Seizures are gone, and I love it. I definitely feel this is a new lease on life. I just felt a real need to give back to raise awareness in the world of epilepsy. Um, surgery is not well known as an option. A lot of GPs don't even know about surgery. There are about 10,000 individuals in Ontario who could benefit from surgery. 2% of them actually get access to this. This cause lies closest to my heart. Out of all the causes, it's become my number one cause. <laughs> can I take your blood pressure, Lillian? Here, can I have your arm? I think she's incredible. Yeah, we have a good life together. <laughs> she seems to be able to do everything now, and uh, you know, she's not sitting back. Definitely, she inspires courage. So, uh, to be where I am now is nothing short of a miracle. <laughs>